In Mexican-American restaurants, particularly in the southern U.S., they serve this cheese dip simply called queso dip or queso blanco. It is truly the milk of the goddess. I'm going to show you one way they make it in the restaurants, then I'm going to show you a couple other ways that you might make it instead. There's only a few core ingredients. For liquid, I found I get the best taste and texture with evaporated milk. That is, milk that has had some of its water boiled away at low temperature in a vacuum pan. I think some people use cream instead. That's good. Regular milk or water have yielded disappointing results for me. I recommend this, evaporated milk. About 100 mils, half a cup, doesn't need to be precise. Then cheese, Monterey Jack cheese is the classic Mexican-American cheese, but lots of semi-firm cheeses could work. Cheddar would be fine. And it would melt faster if I grated it, but I don't feel like getting the grater dirty, so I'm just tearing in chunks. I've got maybe 100 or 120 grams of that, four ounces or so. Then the key ingredient, American cheese, or any kind of processed cheese slice held together with emulsifying salts in this case, sodium phosphate. Others might use sodium citrate. I believe the white-colored American cheese is more commonly used for this. I'm just tearing in like three slices to start with, 50 or 60 grams. Some restaurants probably use only American cheese. That'd be fine, but there's enough sodium phosphate in here to emulsify some jack cheese in there as well. If you can't get processed cheese slices, keep watching. I have multiple solutions for you. A little knob of butter in there for extra richness. That's optional, and obviously skip it if you're using cream. Now I'll just turn the heat on like medium high and be sure to stir this as it melts. If you don't stir, the emulsion will not form. You'll end up with fat floating on top of water. Lots of so-called copycat recipes for restaurant-style queso dip tell you to use starch to stabilize and thicken this stuff, usually cornstarch. If you did that, you would not need those emulsifying salts, but the result is really disappointing, in my opinion. You get a gross, powdery texture as opposed to this unnaturally smooth and gooey texture that you only get with modern science. I think it needs some more salt to work as a dip, and obviously you could stir in any herbs or spices that you want. The Mexican place that Lauren and I go to in Georgia stops right here. The place my mother-in-law goes to in Tennessee flavors the dip with this, some kind of canned or pickled green chili. Any kind works, but you can tell that place up in Tennessee is only mixing in the juice. They must use the solid chili bits for something else. You get that chili flavor and a little acidity without disrupting the smooth texture, but now you've added some water, so you might want to thicken it back up a little bit with more cheese. Remember, it'll thicken a lot as it cools. If you overshoot the mark, you can just stir in some more liquid, and that's done. Truly milk of the goddess, that is. A skin will form on the surface as it cools, totally normal, and it'll dissolve right back in again if you stir it. Oh, like my glasses? They're from the sponsor of this video, Warby Parker. All my glasses have been from Warby Parker for years. The glasses there start at just 95 bucks. They have a huge selection of sexy frames. You can filter by type, and then they'll send you some to try on at home, totally free. Let's see what Lauren thinks. Oh, I like those. I like those. You have cheese on your lip. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think that one there's the winner. <laughs> yeah, right. Once again, I accidentally requested samples of frames I already own. I apparently really like them. Warby Parker has brick and mortar stores too, where you can get eye exams, and they don't just have glasses, they do contact lenses, sunglasses, progressives, whatever. Do Warby Parker's free home try on program yourself. Order five pairs of glasses to try on at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy, it ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Do us both a favor and order your try on with my link in the description. That's warbyparker.com slash ragusia. Thank you, Warby Parker. Now, these recipes I'm giving you in the description make two dishes about this size of queso, so it's enough for like two or three people. You could obviously multiply for a party. Now, the obvious alternative to making queso dip with processed cheese slices is to order your own emulsifying salts online. This is sodium citrate. I use it all the time, and once you have it, this is definitely the easy way. I'm just tearing in maybe 200 grams of jack cheese, more this time, because now we're not using the American cheese. About half a teaspoon of sodium citrate, two or three grams, doesn't have to be precise. And then like half a cup of evaporated milk again, about 100 mils. Be sure to stir as it melts. Ions from the emulsifying salts replace ions in the casein proteins in the cheese and milk, and some more science stuff happens, and then boom, a silky, gooey emulsion. Starch does not do that. Taste, it might not need any salt because the sodium citrate is salty. Flavor it however you want, and it's done. But what if you don't want to order a whole thing of sodium citrate? Well, you can make some at home by combining 
citric acid from lime juice and sodium bicarbonate, baking soda. This absolutely does work. I'm just juicing like three of these limes. I need 40 or 50 mils, maybe a third of a cup or a little more. It's all a guess because this is a natural product. We can't know exactly how much citric acid is in here. But I'll stir in like half a teaspoon of sodium bicarb, two or three grams, and watch science happen. At first, this reaction creates carbon dioxide and some water. Stirring helps dissolve everything, and it pops the bubbles before this bubbles over on you. Once it's done foaming, it's really cold because science. And I think the reactions that get you sodium citrate keep happening over a few minutes after the foaming is over. I get better results if I let this keep doing whatever it's doing for like five minutes, during which time you might turn on the heat and boil off some of the extra water we've introduced here. Just don't take it too far. If it reduces to the point where it starts to brown, it tastes pretty gross. Now I'll put in like 80 mils of evaporated milk, just a little less to account for the moisture already in there. And don't worry about the acid curdling the milk. The acid doesn't exist anymore. It's been neutralized. In goes about 200 grams of jack cheese again, seven or eight ounces, stir and heat until smooth. Please do not ask me whether we've created trisodium citrate or monosodium citrate. I have no idea. This is hardly precise chemistry we're doing here. I just know that I've done this a bunch of times and it works. Beautiful, gooey emulsion. Again, doesn't need any additional salt. We've got sodium from the baking soda. And I'll go ahead and stir in the chili chunks with the pickling juice this time and maybe some cilantro. You could do diced tomatoes, olives, all kinds of things could go in here. Now, does that have some noticeable lime flavor in it? Yes, it does. Is that a bad thing? I don't think so. This is my favorite batch of the three. Get some tortilla chips and try it yourself.